Hi, David. Hi, Karat. My question to you, what risk identification techniques are available and which do you think is the best one? Yes, when we want to identify risks, we could just sit in a room and think. Uh, that's not very efficient or effective. <laughs> uh, maybe we get a group of people to sit together in a room and think together and talk together. Yeah. And that's often what's done. That's also not uh, a great way to do <laughs> things. There are some structured techniques that we can use. There are many, many risk identification techniques. So it might help to, to group them, to think about types of risk identification technique. Um, and I, I'd like to group them in, in two ways. One is we can think about individual techniques that you could do on your own and I could do on my own, sitting at my desk or with my computer or walking in the fields or in the desert. I just go somewhere and I think on my own and you think. And there are techniques which are individual and there are group techniques. So techniques where together we sit down and I suggest something and you come back and we have a discussion and together we, we, we find an answer. So there's individual techniques and group techniques. The other thing which is something we touched on in an earlier uh, video um, is about the time focus of risk. And I think some techniques are focused in the past, mm. some techniques are focused in the present, and some techniques are focused in the future. So let's think of mm. some examples. Uh, and each of those you would have individual and group examples. Yeah, examples would be nice. So thinking about reviewing the past, we could look at uh, the experience of previous projects or previous strategic plans or previous product launches, yep. previous operations that were similar, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what risks occurred then and could they happen now? We could review the lessons learned report if there is such a thing and see uh, what we can learn from that for this situation. We could look at checklists. A checklist is capturing previous experience. It says this is, these are a whole set of threats and opportunities which turned up previously could they happen this time? Yes, no, don't know. You can just go through the checklist yeah. and learn from that previous experience. Yeah. Yeah. So these are a rear focus, looking behind you mm -hmm. to say, how did I get here? Yeah. Post-project reviews, lessons learned databases, yeah. uh, checklists. Yeah. Then we have situations where we could look at where we are now. We could review the contract. The contract is sitting on my, on my desk, the technical specification, um, the, the resource plan. Uh, we can look at all these things and review them right now and say, well, where are the uncertainties in this? Okay. Uh, we have document reviews, we have assumptions analysis, constraints analysis, SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. These things are looking at the situation as it is now yeah. and saying, where are the uncertainties that the current situation gives rise to? So we have past focus, learning from, from the past, looking at what's in front of me today, and then the future focused is saying, well, well, what might happen? Here we need some creativity. We need to have a framework of, of thinking about the future, thing, things that haven't happened yet. So brainstorming is a typical example. Or maybe um, uh, uh, strategic planning, st scenario analysis, or visualization, or futures thinking. Some of these things which are more focused on looking ahead and having a, a, a creative view of what the possibilities are. So I think if you divide the categories to say, there are rearwards facing, past focused risk identification techniques, there are present focused techniques and there are future focused techniques, and some of them are for individuals and some are for groups, then that gives you a view of, of the breadth of available techniques. Now you asked uh, a second part of that question, which is what do I think is the best yes. technique? Yeah. There is no best technique because any one technique, or mm. let's say brainstorming is done very, very often, or checklists, right. yeah. they only look in one direction. So a checklist just captures the past. If it's not on the checklist, I don't think about it. So we miss the things that are in the future. Uh, brainstorming is thinking about the future, and we say, well, you know, what, let's imagine what could happen, yeah. but we don't look at where we are today. Yes. So I think we need to have more than one technique. And my suggestion would be to take one from each group as a minimum. So would you like to know which I would select? Here are my three. I would take one from the past, one from the present, and one from the future. future. And I use the words ABC, little okay. ABC to remind me of the three. Let's start with the present. We can look at our assumptions. Assumptions analysis is viewing the present. Yeah. What did I think when I made my plan, when I set my strategy, when I decided to go down this particular path? What assumptions did I make? We always make assumptions, yeah. and we should record our assumptions, yeah. and we can test our assumptions. Yeah. 
in assumptions analysis. We can say, uh, what is the assumption and how likely is it to be true? Yes. Because some assumptions are certain, the sun will rise tomorrow, I assume. Well, of course sure. the sun will rise tomorrow. But uh, I'm going to be here after lunch. Maybe, maybe I get sick, maybe I get uh, caught in an accident yeah. or something important happens. Maybe I don't come back after lunch. I assume I will, but it could be wrong. Uh, is the camera going to keep working? I hope so, but it's an <laughs> assumption and it might not. And so we have backups. So assumptions analysis says, first of all, how likely is it to be wrong? And if it was wrong, what would the effect be? So if the camera stopped working, we have two other cameras, we're okay. And so the effect is not so bad. But assumptions analysis is looking at what we have today, mm -hmm. how likely is our assumption to be wrong, and what would the impact be, which gives you an uncertainty with an effect, a risk. Then B is for brainstorming. Brainstorming is future focused. It's getting a group of people together and saying, what can you imagine that isn't currently true? And so again, that's a future focused group technique where we can think about the future and learn uh, potential uncertainties that we should take care of. So A is assumptions analysis, B is brainstorming, and C is checklists. The checklist has captured the past. Somebody has thought about these things that were risks that occurred previously, both yes. threats and opportunities, yes. and I can learn from that. So my view would be at least to start with ABC, mm -hmm. assumptions analysis, brainstorming, and checklists, because I've picked from the three perspectives. And then also checklists are an individual, uh, you know, I do this on my own, brainstorming is group, and assumptions analysis can be done either just by myself or, or by a group. So it gives you that a nice mix of techniques and then you're more likely to, to pick up more I of the agree, risks. I agree. David, tell us how can we use this technique in identifying uh, risk in all categories? Yes, this is a, a very common question. How do I identify all the risks? Yes. The answer is you can't. You'll never identify all of the risks. Um, you can only identify risks that are visible today. Hmm. And there are two reasons for that. One is that um, some risks emerge later on. It's like if you're, if you're walking down the street and there's a building here and you come to a crossroads, you can only see what's in front of you. You can't see what's around the corner Correct. until you get to the crossroads. Yeah. And very often on our projects and in our businesses, we can see the risks that are directly in front of us, but we can't see what's around the corner until we've made some progress. Correct. So we do, let's say, the design phase and we come to implementation. Yeah. Our design phase, then we've reached this and we turn the corner and we say, ah, here are some new risks that we couldn't see. Now we've made progress, we can see them. That's so right. risks emerge with time and we can't see those until time has passed. But there are also other risks which arise because of our own choices and decisions. And so those risks don't exist until I make that choice. So until I've made certain design decisions, those design decisions will open up a whole set of risks that weren't there, threats and opportunities, they weren't there until I made that design decision. And so I couldn't see those in advance before I made that decision. So there's two reasons that risks uh, can't be identified all risks right now. One is because they emerge with time and the other is because they emerge as a result of my actions. And that of course is why the risk process needs to be repeated. So after we've made some progress and made some decisions we need to stop and say okay now what risks have we got? And that's the last question in the risk process. What changed? Because always there will be new risks, some risks will have gone away and new ones will have arisen. So yes. we can't ever identify all the risks. We, we want can't. to identify as many as possible, which using a, a range of techniques will help. But we also need to come back later and look again at what risks have emerged, either with time or from our decisions. Or it could be from external factors, or external which, factors. which were unprecedented. Exactly, all of those That's things. That's always the case. Yes, yes, definitely. From, well, internal, external commercial and technical, as we talked about. Technical, that's categories. right, that's right. It goes back to the four categories of exactly risk. Exactly that. Thank you, David. Thank you.